Hey everyone, this is Krish. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to talk about uh, performance in the context of Heroku deployments and dynos. Uh, if you're familiar with Heroku or even with AWS, for instance, you know each of these providers uh, use terminologies that are generally specific to their own products. So Heroku calls them dynos. Essentially, a dyno is, is a Linux container. So they have a variety of dynos that you could uh, use for your deployments. So you could have standard 1x dynos uh, or standard 2x dynos uh, and then they have the next level performance L, I think performance M and then performance L dynos. So I've been looking at, uh, we use a, a, a combination of these dynos. Um, so I want to share what, I'm, what I've learned and what I'm learning in the process. So a standard 1x dyno, typically uh, it, it comes with 512 megs of RAM. Uh, a 2x dyno has twice uh, the memory. Uh, so it's a gig and then the performance M, I think it's 2.5 gigs and the L is like 16 gigs and they get really expensive, right? The performance dynos are pricey. Uh, the standard 1x dynos, I think they are like $25 a month uh, for a dyno. Uh, now the thing is, how do you pick and choose uh, which ones to use for your environments? Uh, I'm not going to talk about lower environments. I'm just going to talk about production in general. And let's say if you're a startup, smaller shop, and if you're like us, you're bootstrap funded, you want to use your money wisely, right? Your investments, because you have plenty of expenses, you want to just manage, you know, bucket them. So in terms of, okay, I want to give the best experience to the user, but of course, you know, uh, uh, we are constrained by the amount of money we can spend. Obviously, if we buy more dynos and more memory and whatnot, uh, the pages are going to be much faster, um, but we want to make them fast enough so you have a great user experience. Uh, at the same time, it doesn't cost us a whole lot of money, especially now because it's, it's free as well. Right? We even started charging. Um, so back to the dynos, right? So I was trying to compare, okay, 1x versus 2x dyno. So on paper, they're like, okay, is are two 1x dynos equivalent to one 2x dyno? Not really, right? Because the 1x dyno has 512 megs of RAM. Uh, so getting two of them should, at least from a memory standpoint, make it similar to a 2x dyno. But obviously there is a footprint for each of these containers. And you know, Linux containers tend to have a much lower footprint. Um, but, but let's say, I don't know these numbers, but I'm gonna make some assumptions as I go. Let's say it's about 100 megs uh, per dyno. Uh, let's say that's the memory footprint uh, for that container to be up and running. So that gives us the other 80%, which is like 400 megs, uh, which is a small number if you think about it. But since this is space in the cloud, servers on the cloud, they are expensive. Uh, if you were running one in the basement, it's probably gonna be a whole lot cheaper. Uh, but anyways, right back to this. So if I had two 1x dynos, that means I have about 800 megs of RAM available uh, because there's a 100 meg footprint on each of them. If I have one 2x dyno, then if the footprint is the same, it's obviously gonna be the same, it's 100 megs. Um, I would have 900 megs of memory available, right? So clearly there is a literally more than 10 to 15% gain right there with just a small comparison like that. So in this example, uh, in this particular use case, uh, the 2x dyno works better, uh, but obviously there are other differences. When I have two 1x dynos, uh, each of them I believe come with like two CPUs. Uh, so if I, had, if I had two 1x dynos, I can have, you know, we, have, we are a single page app, so we have multiple requests fired at just about the same time uh, to render a single page. So we want it to happen in parallel. So if I had two 1x dynos, then it can do twice the number of things that one 2x dyno can do from a processing standpoint, because if I had two requests and it's gonna to have to queue up in the 2x dyno. So there is that downside there, right? So more memory uh, because the footprints are lower as you, as you go uh, with the 2x dynos because they have more memory per dyno. But at the same time, the number of requests that can be processed at any given point of time, that's gonna be fewer because I have to spend the $50 either on two 1x's or one 2x dynos, right? Uh, we'll not talk about the M and the L probably in this video. I'll do, I'll do a different video to, to, to discuss that. So those are some of the decisions that uh, you may want to consider, right? Uh, and also Heroku lets you uh, mix and match dynos, but not across the board. If you purchase, like if you lease the performance dynos, you can mix and match them with the standard dynos and so on and so forth. So once you decide how much money you want to spend on these servers, then you have to make these calls. And plus, you know, in our case, we have a UI server, we have an API server, uh, we have a pretty distributed architecture. Uh, we have a RabbitMQ uh, broker as well. So, you know, there is money to be spent in, in different pockets. But if you're a startup with, who have, that has like a single app, for instance, whether it's a Node app or a Rails app, 
everything is all inclusive then obviously you have a bit more money because you're just uh, you know spending on fewer dinos and in our case we have to get that number of dinos whatever those dinos are on the ui side and on the api side as well um, so it gets pretty interesting soon enough uh, i'll just talk about the performance m and l dinos at a high level obviously right just to give you some context you can uh, read through all of their documentation to, to learn a whole lot more or you can do some quick tests yourself to be able to uh, compare and contrast but at least this will give you some idea if you don't already know this thanks for watching